Hello, welcome. Back to Kickstart. Hope you enjoy the show. At Josie. Sorry for the feedback. Hello, welcome. This is what it looks like. People are streaming in. Reception is still taking place at the back. As soon as people are seated, we'll take that. Thank you. 
She loves this platform that you can help me. She called me, was it yesterday or before yesterday? So, before he calls me up, he tells me I'm coming with a couple of people um, who are in the Yali network and you're going to be joining us. Can you just tell us two, two minutes? Good evening. <laughs> My name is Wiboni and I was well, a Yali alumni. Yali is, uh, is an initiative by President Barack Obama to raise the next uh, good leaders in Africa. So um, Yali stands for Young African Leaders Initiative. Uh, and I, find, I found the hookup dinner relevant for the entrepreneurship track. And I then suggested that they, uh, they include the hookup dinner in the program. So it accommodates um, all the 14 countries within the SEDEC. So I thought um, the hookup dinner should be part of the program. And yes, the rest is history. That's right! <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me a round of applause? We have a such pressure. We are now it more so because we are spreading the name to the SEDEC in general. Um, knowing that you're here, you better be positioning yourself to be starting a similar thing in your country. And we, we're hoping for regional integration, and that's why we have it. It's, it's not a South African thing, it's an African thing, it's an African agenda, and we're obsessed about that. And we know that at the stage that we are right now, we, I don't know, there's just, there's just this energy that's rising, that's just telling us that we've got to come together, we've got to collaborate, we've got to do things together. And it's beautiful, and I'm hoping that we can connect a whole lot more. Just to give you a bit of an insight about the hookup dinner, it's moved from, so on this side you will see, the logo says the hookup dinner. So people think it's a place, dating society. If you want to get hooked up, you know, come here. Well, you're not too far off. It's a platform where you connect with enterprising young minds. So you find people that are in the corporate space that are doing amazing things within the corporate. They happen to be entrepreneurs. And then you find people who are out of the system trying to not make. Those are entrepreneurs. So we, we are all about sharing best practice, connecting with each other, giving each other ideas, and sharing opportunities together and doing business amongst ourselves. And we've proven it over the past four years. It's been a great, it's been an amazing journey. And we're not stopping, we're not stopping from nobody. And I'm really, 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 really excited that Africans are connecting. It's, it's an amazing time. It's, it's an amazing time to be alive. And I'm hoping that we are going to carry it forward and we are going to connect even more. Our ethos is very simple. We say um, in our values, uh, we connect with each other, we engage with each other, and we contribute to each other's success. The third one is the most important, contribute. So you don't come here with an attitude of taking. You come here with an attitude of, what can I personally contribute to this community? What that does is that it makes the next person let their back down. Instead of being defensive, they open up and they want to engage. They want to see what, 
how they can be relevant to you and potentially add value to, to your entity, to your life. So it's about human connections, people connecting at a human level. And by connecting at a human level, they take it to that next level, which is about connecting at a business level. You can never do business with anybody that you do not trust. Business is built at the speed of trust. So let's just remember that as we engage to and network to that. I'd like to work to um, introduce our team to you. They're an amazing bunch. And I'm excited tonight that we've got a couple of guys um, who are operating in some of the SADC countries that we're operating in. Um, I'm going to start on this side because he's the closest. Uh, on Twitter or, in or Instagram or social media, you will find him as Constant Dizer. Uh, his name is Constantine Yanzero. He's a fire starter in Zimbabwe. He's a founder of the H2C co working space, which is under the Udubu Institute. So in Harare, he's doing an amazing thing. He's a Yalu alumni. He's just returned from, uh, from the US and we've learned a whole lot. And we're going to learn a whole lot on later. Um, Costa, we you just, yeah. All right. And then on my left, got our. Where are you? I think you were there. <laughs> he disappeared. Okay, I'm going to introduce the next person. Pakiso over there. I see him. The guy standing, just wave so people see you. Pakis is our co founder. Um, in the 90s. And he went away overseas to go and discover the world. I enticed him in the internet with pictures of how I was going back home. And he came back. And I'm excited that he came back because we've been rock rocking this ship together. And um, a couple of what? You know, 18 years? Let's go together as friends. We're married, bro. You're stuck with me, man. <laughs> and, you know, friends personally and friends in business and business partners, it's, it's, it's a loyalty thing, it's a friendship thing, and we're just pushing ahead and seeing what, what, uh, what the future brings for us. And I'd like to introduce uh, at the back our admin team. We've got a lady there in white. Her name is Chloe. She's the one that collects our money. You can see she's holding us. She does not lie. She collects the money. Sony is our boss. She manages us in the office. She ensures that we get to our meetings on time. She ensures that our diaries are straight. And she ensures that there's money in the bank. She's one of the most important people in the business. And she's our newest member, by the way. The ladies, they've got Opalisa, in this way. That's Pali. We, Liso, who runs the hookup data in the Kurulemi, events manager. And I cannot see Charlotte, she might be in later, who's our business development manager. I these people because sometimes there's this notion that a brand operates through one person. It doesn't, I'm just a face, but um, it does not operate because I'm, the, I'm just the evangelist in, in this thing. There's a greater team that actually makes magic happen. On this side, I've got Offensive. Offensive, can you just show yourself? Offensive has been with us at the Hookup Cleaner since day one. Four years ago, um, when we started this thing, he was there and said, I've got some, dude. I, I just want to be part of this thing. And he contributes uh, as, the, as part of the AD team. And that's essentially how we build our network and how we build services that, uh, that, that we procure in the hookup data. We ensure that we use other startups in our network so, so that we are not jack of all trades. Instead of buying some and keeping it with them, why not use a small business that is actually specializing in that and share the, 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 the the wealth and the resources amongst ourselves. And then we've got uh, Cooler Box. Cooler Box are the people that tell our stories. Um, it's over there behind the, the massive thing that he's holding, and I see he's got his teammate tonight, which means you're growing, right? I'm excited about that. So he captures our stories. I mean, if you look for him online, it's Cooler Box TV. Um, anything creative, this guy will sort you out. He's, he's amazing at that. And just capture stories and then push them out there. We are building a TV series together um, as that and telling entrepreneurial stories. We'll be uh, announcing pretty soon that we're going to be releasing that. So watch out for it. And if you want to use the services, feel free. Um, we'd like to thank Open for our hosts. Um, I know that Maggie's here. Maggie's the, uh, the manager for, for the space. Uh, we, you know, we've been in a partnership with Open for the past three years so far. I think it was, was it 2014 or 2013. 2013, we launched here together with SAB Kickstarter in August. It was a year after we, uh, the youth the whole was founded. And Open has been our home ever since. It's a hub for entrepreneurial creative thinking for, 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 for young minds that are looking to build up something and, and take it forward. And this is why we love this It's got a particular energy about it that I cannot explain, but I love it here. And this is why we stuck to it. And we haven't moved to anywhere else as the home of that Josie. 
So for that, we would really like would, would really like to end our partnership with them. Um, just to explain how the evening is going to function or what is going to take place for tonight. Does everybody have a program? If you don't have a program, please, please raise your hand so that the team can sort you out. Team, please take notes and you can sort the guys out. Um, first, we're going to do so. Our, our, our evening is divided into three segments. The first segment is called We're Just Page 180. Pretty much what that is is the hook. It's about you standing here sharing your ideas in, in, in 180 seconds and getting the audience to validate you. So, giving you feedback just the way that they receive it. So it's a community-driven approach. It's not a, a dragon staring or a shark tank. Or, we're not here to burn you. We're not here to crush you. We're here to build you. We're here to contribute to your success. So remember that when you get feedback about the pitch, remember that you are not here to crush the entrepreneur or the person that's sharing the idea because it is the bravest thing to stand in front of people and speak. Like it is the bravest thing one can do. I know it personally because I have a very shy personality, but most people do not know that because I just get trapped just because I can force myself to constantly stand in front of people. So remember that when you give people feedback, but don't crush them, but don't lie to them either. Give them constructive feedback that's going to build up on them to help them to make it better. Are we cool? Thank you. All right, next part of the program will be what we call the networking mixer. That is the most exciting part from the feedback that we've gotten over the years. It is about the community connecting and engaging. So, uh, the networking mix is like a speed dating uh, type of uh, uh, situation that will take place. We put people into groups of 10 and they introduce each other in an elevator pitch style. So, you've got exactly 60 seconds each to introduce yourself and share how you can contribute. And it breaks the ice so that after the official proceedings are over, you've got something to talk about. So, it, you, you happen to be a plumber and that's, that's what you do want. You're looking to grow within that space. And that's what you've shared with them. With you. It makes it easy that when I engage with, oh, yeah, you, I, I heard the thing that you said you, you can plan with you. Tell me a bit more. It's just an icebreaker. It's a way of making sure that all of us here get to know each other. Most people come to the networking function, they engage one or two people with the person that they came with, and they, they leave. So we, we, we're really obsessed about breaking that because what is the point of coming to networking events if you're not to meet new people? That could potentially add back to what you're doing. And then the third segment um, is what we call the masterclass. What the masterclass will do for us tonight is um, just give us insights from an international perspective. And what is going to happen tonight is very exciting for me. I'm going to introduce the lineup a bit later. I don't want to spoil it just yet. Um, you can see on the program, but I'll tell you a bit more about our guests that are visiting us. It's, it's a very, very special evening for us, and it's been a very special week for us because we had the opportunity and the pleasure of engaging with our international guests and, uh, and show them what's happening in the local ecosystem. As a matter of fact, I went to the Sutra last night with uh, Costa, and we, we, we were celebrating the first year anniversary of the Hope Again Series in the Sutra, and the magic that is taking place there. It tells you that Africans are dreaming, and they're dreaming big and better off and we are starting to realize that the solutions are coming for the thing. So we've been westernizing our, 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 our solutions. We've been looking to the West and saying, oh, let's take that and plug it in. It does not work. Instead, now we look to international best practice and we modernize what we are doing as Africans versus westernizing. We are modernizing. You must remember that when you do your pitch or when you try and solve a problem, solve a problem with an African mind because Africans are unique. Just as much as Europeans or Americans are unique, and they solve problems from their country. You must remember that when you solve problems from Africa, that you are not going to take a solution that comes from outside and think it's going to work by plugging and playing a gap. Like you must make sure that you localize it and you modernize your solution. It must be relevant. Just remember that. Now I'm going to introduce our first uh, our host for the speech segment. Oh, all right. Basica just reminded me and he was hiding actually. So Basica has our social media. Please. Who's on Twitter, by the way? Who's on Facebook? Uh, guys, who are you? Apparently, the fourth industrial revolution is very important. Very compute. So, if you're, if you're on the net and you have a social media account, particularly Twitter, our hashtag is that Josie. That is T H U D J O Z I. That Josie. Um, share the conversation with people on the outside. We've got, watching, we've got people that are watching on the live stream. I'm 
the next to the broadcast images so that we can share for those that cannot attend our event tonight and something they happen to be sitting somewhere where they have the internet connection, they can watch the event tonight. So if you are on social media, make sure that you use the hashtag that joins to come to the answer so that they can catch some of the actions to take place. Are we clear? Does anybody need Wi-Fi? All right. Um, the code I forgot it. Okay, sir. So look for just search for Wi Fi, you're going to find open. When you find open, um, type in on the username FHC and the password is FHC. You see? Small caps, everything is small caps. Username FHC, password FHC. We try to keep it as simple as possible. We're hoping that we can connect online and share the conversation that will take a place tonight. I'm going to introduce our pitch host. I'm very excited because we constantly try to do different things here. And our day one, come here, my guy. So we've got a guy called Octavius Nobu. On the net, we call him OP. He's the corporate partner. And he's the head of uh, Enterprise Development at SAP Kickstart. He's going to give you just a 30 second pitch about who he is, what he's passionate about, and then he will jump straight into the pitch. Maybe so you can just introduce yourself. <laughs> okay, so um, my name is Octavius. I didn't get that video of introducing myself. Um, but my life is about waking up, looking for entrepreneurs, investing in them, and seeing them grow. That's really what I do. Um, whether they're in agriculture, they're in pharmaceuticals, they're in, in, in fintech, they're in whatever industry they're in. That's my team. And, my team is, um, and, and I'm hoping that scope will, will increase now with AVM in bed now, you know, being the, the new bosses. So, but we don't know what, what that would change, what scope that would change. But it's exciting. That's what we do. And um, yeah, I think that's as far as, as my intro is concerned. I think that's just about it. All right, cool. <clears throat> Who's from East Africa? East Africa. Any here? No one? Um, West? No? Right here, right here, man. Okay, okay, good. So, the West. So most of, well, all of us, excluding the guys from UK, are uh, from South. Yeah? Almost, okay. So, so can you agree with me that, um, would you agree with me that there is chaos? Right? There's chaos right now. If you know, listen very carefully, closely, put your ear on the ground. There's always chaos across the continent. Yes? No? Okay. I'm not sure what you mean in the I, I, I would have expected someone to ask. But anyway, uh, whatever you think that chaos means, um, I think it's the best time to be alive. I really think it's the best time. So the next pitches that I'm going to be coming through, hopefully, will be telling us and dancing us on how they will be taking advantage of that chaos. I think uh, it's level of practice that talks about you know, how beautiful chaos means for it. You know, it's like a, a clean thought. Kind of come up with any opportunities. Yeah. So, so I'm hoping the guy that I'm coming through will uh, will, will indulge us with that. So, in front of you, most of you guys, when you came in, you should have been given this. Uh, it's a little um, pamphlet showing the guy that will be pitching tonight. You guys follow all of it. Yeah. The back of this uh, this pamphlet there is uh, the names of the guy that will be pitching tonight and how to score them. So you score in these guys when they pitch, you listen to them, between um, one and five, five being the highest, do not count the total score. We've got a team that's going to consolidate all that for you. Do you see? Do you see? Okay, so we're good. The, um, I need the guys that will be pitching now to We've been given push clinics, right? Am I correct? So they know their story. They should know their story. At least we expect them to know their story. But I'm hoping that what they're supposed to do is what I call part of the stories. Yeah? No? Maybe? 
first one we got it's Mule. It's Mule Maram. Where's Mule? Where's Mule? We also have Zemi. Zemi family. Right at the back. And we've got who Shagan is. Is he here? Okay, then. This Tafadzo here. See the name is uh, from uh, Amplified. I'm not sure. She or he. The unisex name. Tafadzo. It's a guy. It's a guy. Yeah. Okay. But I think it's a unisex name. Anyway, uh, it's Bobby Kosi here. Bobby Kosi. Mutau of Nativi group, not here. Right, so who is our timekeeper? So you're going to be our timekeeper. One page a second. Um, and I'm hoping that this guy, that they, they will take advantage of what they do. Um, take on the kids. And I will invite two questions from the floor immediately after the, the pitch. Um, I need Mulemo to come through and the stage is yours. Good evening. Um, my name is uh, Homo Nemo, and I'm the founder of We Will Okay. Moving to a new city can be quite a stressful and daunting experience for, for a person. Uh, we aim to solve this problem. Uh, we Will Okay is a service which helps uh, professional migrants, um, students, and families uh, relocate uh, with their relocation needs to a new city. Uh, we help um, our clients. Um, uh, find accommodation. We help them with the transporting needs because they're in the new city. Um, if it's a family, we help uh, the clients you know, find a school for the kids. Uh, we also go as far as to you know, help with uh, area orientation. Um, and as well, we help them with the furniture removal. So it's a package, it's, it's a package service um, which aims to you know, solve uh, the, um, the problems of a person who's moving to a new place. Um, our, our, our market segments are divided in those three. So we're looking at students, we're looking at students, we're looking at professional migrants, we're looking at, um, at families as well. So our range key is uh, happening this way. We charge our, our, our clients for each of those services that we offer. Um, so another, so for final accommodation, we're charging. Um, for final school for kids, we charge as well, and so on and so forth. Another, um, um, Revenue model, uh, revenue stream for us is the commission we earn. So if it's a student who's coming to a new city um, and they, you know, they need bed and fridge and so on and so forth, we currently negotiate with Metro, which is a, a retailer um, and, and furniture company, so that when we bring our clients over, um, and we earn commission from what from, from what they purchase as well. Uh, from the state agents as well, we um, uh, we find accommodation for our clients. They not only pay us, but as well we will commission for the community for doing um, a client for the, for the state agents as well. Um, our competitors are, are quite vast. So we're looking at your furniture removals, looking at your, um, your furniture removals, like I said, um, and as well uh, some of our competitors. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, furniture removals and transport, transport, transport uh, organizations. Transport organizations as well, but we have the competitive advantage because we offer package service for for, for our clients. Uh, what we're looking for in terms of finance is uh, three hundred forty thousand. Um, Eighty thousand going to go to buying a vehicle. So we transport our clients when we are city. We then we show them around like your big attachment. Uh, One hundred thirty will go to getting a truck because we uh, to be able to get around the furniture. Um, and then um, seventy thousand. We'll go to our working capital, um, and then 60,000 will go to our branding and marketing because we need uh, to establish our brand identity. Uh, we've been in business for three months so far. Do you have one more month? Okay, cool. Um, I, guys, I must be honest. These guys are very lucky. From the time the company started, there was no one who used. PowerPoint presentation to assist your pitch. Like I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking, wow, so there's a deck? Jeez, this guy is like, because that's like double the minutes. You're actually at like one eight times two. 
because you're talking in this, but that thing that people are reading there. So I think we might just need to reduce that time to like 60 seconds. <laughs> you know, to make it we want it something like that. Okay, so questions? Um two questions based on that. Um uh put a hand there. Uh, um, just a question or a point of concern uh, in terms of how you're going to use your capital outlay, wherever you want to invest. You, you essentially your business is to assist people who live in different cities. Now you want to purchase vehicles and trucks in which are going to be based in which particular city. I think it's a bit of a concern. The other thing that I would, I, would, I would recommend to solve that issue is if you probably have partnerships with companies that like Uber, for instance, or companies that do that so that you can be able to get into other cities with ease. Because I'm, I'm concerned that you're going to be able to service one city with those fleet, but then what about the other city that you're not wasting? So it's just from that angle that I'm just helping more. Oh. Want to answer that? Go ahead. Can I, can I go ahead? Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm also concerned about your location. Where we're actually going. But moreover, I'm also concerned about your competition because the guys that sell beds and whatnot cannot be a competitor as you actually research the market because your business seems unique in terms of helping the families and, and students, but how you have people that do the similar thing that you do that we have actually spotted as a physical competition. Um, yes, thanks a lot for that. Um, I've, I've, I've done expensive research. Uh, I've done, I mean, um, I've had a business that, that hasn't worked, that didn't work out before, so I know, you know, so what it takes. You know, to establish a business. So I've done my research. Um, for anyone who's here now, if you go and search patient service, you'll find um, that you, you know it's, it's furniture removal companies, um, and they don't go as far as we go to um, you know when we, you know, how we assist our clients. So this this model actually um, I found I just I discovered this model before. Initially, I wanted the business to be, to help foreigners who are coming to the country. To integrate, right? So I, I, I looked at okay, that might be the barrier to entry might be a bit high for that. So I, I, brought, I localized it and said, How about I help as well people who are in South Africa who are going to move to the city? Um, so the, the model is well, if you, if, if you get uh, embassies, embassies have this model whereby if somebody's coming from overseas, they deal as an employee of the embassy, they actually do all the services for them. But as far as I've searched um, about this exact model, I'm yet to find the exact model, which is why I see my competitors are uh, those, you know, those uh, various se sectors, um, you know, of business. Yeah. Sure. Um, about about partnerships, uh, you know, when you go into partnerships, it, you, you become dependent on the person who to agree with you to partner. So you know, we want to leave this in our hands. You know, so if we keep going to be dependent on Uber to say you know, to partner with us, we might get nowhere because we give them the power to actually work with us. So we have to decide for us if they you know this is going to work or not. So that's why we try to bring, we want to bring ourselves. That's why we want to as well. You know, so we have our own you know, way by we transport our own clients. Um, because we're still looking for traction, we want this, we want to start. Uh, so far, actually, we have about six clients. Um, because we're looking, we're looking for traction first. So you can't sort of establish your goal post all over the country before you know you've earned, you gain some sort of traction. So we want to do this in Houghton first because, according to stats, they say. Some forty to fifty thousand people come to Houghton every month. So we want to start a here in Houghton, have a you know a part of that market of people coming into the city who are you know students and professional migrants, uh, people coming to a new job, a new company. Um, you know we want to service those people, and as well our our network. We are working with um, you know companies to say if you're a company, have us on as a service provider. 
or if you're not going to have some assistance provided, at least recommend us to apply because you know we we proven that this 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 concept actually helps improve employees because you know when you're going to you want to visit it, it's quite stressful and it's difficult to hit the ground running from the first day. So we help you can visit the ground running from the first day. Take care of all that. Cool. Thanks so much, Monica. Guys, thank you for this. Um, we like it. Um, that's his very proposition from the statement. I think it was even on the deck that, um, which is a bonus from a massive piece of So funding needs. Um, so, so, yeah. So, thanks, guys, for the questions. Do we have Zuli? Where's Zuli? Um, you raise your hand. Is that um, some, okay, there. Is that cool. Thank you. is a weather strip and what is a weather strip a weather strip is those apparatus that are used at the bottom part of the door to stop the ingress of any foreign matter into a room or into a house be it dust water insects etc uh, with this product for us to go into the market we need 500,000 of your beautiful rents <laughs> <laughs> um, we have been in talks with some retail outlets very much is one of them and so is builders warehouse so now the thing is uh, these retail outlets they are willing to do business with us provided that we bring a finished product to the market so that is why we need that investment so if I may show you how the product works. So this would be your door. This would be the bottom part of the door. And this would be the, the product, the, 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 the weather strip. So as this is a prototype, it's in plastic, but the finished product will be in aluminum. So how does this work? We do have these uh, original weather strips that are being used presently. And those that have this aluminum, and the rubber, but this one is to work more nicely because it is automatic and it stops any ingress of any foreign matter. Okay, um, uh, thank you, uh, Zulu. I know you think it was a sabotage. 
and you don't know when you really enter into the net, uh, into an elevator whether the CEO is going to jump in last second, jump in and uh, I don't know if I even see. So, to Zoe. Guys, you, you must be voting, eh? You voted to the first car, you must like, vote as they will take you through their, their business. There's a lady there at the corner. And uh, hopefully, she can give us a beautiful friends. I don't know those who don't, um, have uh, ugly washers and dollars and, and euros. I don't know about you guys. So, or shillings. Hi, Zoli. Um, I wanted to know you have a good product. Um, however, I didn't get the numbers. Like, how much do you need? How much are you selling per unit? And what your profit margins look like, at least in the near future? So you Wanted 500 beautiful rents. That's what I bought. 500,000 beautiful rents. And how much per unit would you be selling? And what does a profit look like? The profit margins in the future? Well, the cost of the product would be 210 per unit, and it will be sold at 499. It's a premium product, it can compete with the best in the world. You mentioned that your product is automatic. Can you just elaborate on Okay, so when you open the door, it rises up and moves with the door, but when you shut the door, it seals. This is how it works. Can you see the movement? There is a roller underneath. This roller is the thing that seems the that gap there between the, the door and the, the bottom part of the door and the floor. So it's not just stationary there. When you open the door, it rises up. When you close the door, it goes down to see. Not like your usual weather strip. Yeah, is saying, yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, uh, Zoli. Guys, please vote for Zoli. You have to vote for him. Is Msangani um, is Yeah, ready? Please come through. Has Tafazar arrived? And uh, Bongikosi? Has Bongikosi arrived? No? Okay. So before we start, I'm going to have a little tablet roaming around, just look at it, that's our better, play around with it, um, order the poison that you want, that's fun as well. So just, there's a tablet everyone can see. So hello, I am Muntlana Nisi and this is Kwezi, we're the co-founders of Dobro. I think I'll get you becoming a friend. How many of you have run out of alcohol at the most realistic of times? You can be honest, it's fine. Yes. How many of you have had to drive? How many of you have had to drive to bribe Metro Police? You see, it's a bit of a problem. So people run out of alcohol at the weirdest of times. And in fact, this is what we got when we did our market validation. A lot of customers say, I don't know about alcohol, I just don't bother. Um, and then I have a crappy evening and then I just watch uh, Telemundo the whole night and I'm depressed until the next day. And this is the problem when people run out of alcohol in the same time. So what we've done is we've built an alcohol delivery platform called Dobro, which lets you order your alcohol and gets it delivered to you within 30 to 60 minutes or 59 minutes because we quickly like that of having ordered it. So our UX is pretty simple. Um, I wish that it would come up on the deck. Our UX is pretty simple. The app geolocates where you are. You, 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 you log in. You look at the product catalog, you order it, and it's delivered to you within 60 seconds of having built that. Now, we're looking at running within the northern, the south, the east, and central Johannesburg is the start. We're going to be moving to Cape Town next year, and then Durban later the, the year after. So we've done that, and we'd like for you to play around with our beta because we think we have a great business model because we turn the up. Um, so, uh, thank you for that. So the business model is very unique. 
We're a sharing economy company. Think of us as the Uber to drinks. Um, it's simple. Uh, we don't own the shops. We don't own the cars. We don't own the, the, the packaging. Um, we leverage partnerships, and our thing is how do we effectively leverage the efficient use of shop resources effectively. And our financial model is, is very basic. We actually have partnered up with the, with the bottle stores, and I was to say we actually working on the one hundred percent license fee uh, on a revenue share model in terms of the sales that they make. Um, in terms of uh, the team, uh, it's just me and Clarice. So I'm uh, former McKinsey, and I've actually gotten very excited about the tech space that we worked um, within the tech space that we've out before, and Clarice is also. Um, has worked in Silicon Valley at base ventures. And I think we like the fact that we have Yanni Fellows because we were part of the first cohort as well. So thank you very much. I don't know why I would, there was a mention of me inviting this concept. Yes, I work for SAB. <laughs> so I'm not going to help these guys to pump up business or big pitches. You know? Um, I can almost imagine like a, a new pitch in my head right now to keep you there. Um, so, question time. To the doctor. I don't know what's dog. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. That's fine. Like, uh, is that even like legal alcohol? Dog? Okay. Question shoot. Yeah, uh, guys, yeah, great concept. I'll bring another one. Um, but now, how do you control, you know, Dynamics of having underage people in order to do that. Yeah. Um, we didn't get your name. Thank you very much for that. But within our driver network um, that we put together, is a, there's an there's a ID verification system. So each and every person, when the driver believes that this person might be underage, will be required to, to show ID. They don't we just take the alcohol back because it's illegal to sell to the other people, but we've also built in um, the age skip uh, gap that gives you, I don't know what they call it, but there's a word for it, when you come into the platform and you ask you your age and you can verify your age through that. So we work very hard to do that, but we're just not going to give you a call if you're the age. Okay, hi guys. Um, I just really want to know, uh, in terms of, if I ran out of alcohol and I want to get my alcohol by three o'clock, so what we do right now is because we've partnered with uh, the bottle stores, um, we actually have to leverage their liquor license. We don't sell such as a bottle store, we to manage the platform. Um, so we have to work with the operating hours. Um, the one thing that we've agreed in the future is to see whether or not we can actually put subscriptions uh, on the platform. Because in terms of uh, regulatory purposes, we can order drinks with them, the liquor license time, the delivery is up to you. Um, so for right now, we have to we have to leverage their 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 license, but uh, we have to use like that. Also, I think it's important to highlight that it's just illegal to sell alcohol past a certain time in South Africa, and we're law abiding citizens. We actually, we actually like staying out of jail. But what we have done is you see on the beta um, somewhere out there is that you see once you check out the product. So you can be sitting it at the office, and then you give us a delivery time. So if you say, I'm going to get home at 10 o'clock, but you've checked out your alcohol, that's the time the alcohol can go to your house, and then you have your product. Um, I think that's all I just want to find out, in terms of, in fact, I love your idea, right? It's brilliant. I run out of alcohol, and I thought it's not a good idea, but it's like, it's my question. Have you thought about the security, um, the security that to help with the at certain hours of the night? And secondly, is there a quantity barrier in terms of the case out of the party? The time that I can be able to deliver. My sister, look, you can call a bucky, we'll bring it to you as long as you pay us, we're happy. Important one. But also in terms of, of our partnerships. So what we've done is this is why it's the organization. So drivers, for instance, have insurance with the companies that we're working with right now. Financial security, because I think it's an important thing to look at, is that we've looked at the cyber security, but we're also working with the security. So I think there's three more things to add there. Um, one, we have a CTO, um, actually managing the product, and he's managed security. So he's built his building and the functionality is like that. 
um, to the drinks in front of the holy. We've taken my six months with me. Uh, we're going to be in for a big major option. So it is a checklist for Sean Mithrick. We partner with the Fame of Video Beach Payments. Um, so you can actually do this and you get to talk to it once I'll go into it. All right. Um, so guys, please vote. Um, between one to five, is, yeah, one to five, one to zero. Interesting parts. Now, the invitation now is open to the floor. Who wants to take on the challenge of coming and pitching their concert or their business? I see a hand there. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mipon is a special case, you know, because Mipon has pitched here before and has won before. In fact, she's come through SAP to fix that problem. And she was just telling me when she walked in that, you know, you are a business prophet because the business is, uh, is taking off very nicely now. Um, so, I'm worried, but it's fine. Let's have it because she took the, you know, the the invitation by both hands. There was a hand at the back. Please come through. Is there someone else she's happy to offer a slot? Is there someone else? Okay, so in the absence of many takers, so we're gonna go with, with my body. My brother, please introduce yourself and you guys can write his name somewhere. If you can, add your Twitter handle so that people can follow you and, and whatnot. So we'll give you a grace time of two seconds more, you know, um, there's a timekeeper, so I'll make sure um, you want to go uh, introduce yourself. Good evening, guys. Uh, my name is Gary Mikali. I'm a founder of a newspaper called Plus News. So basically what Plus News is, uh, Plus News is a new paper which writes about everything that's positive. If you could look at the, all the newspapers these days, all they write about is negative stuff. So we aim to tell our inspirational and motivational stories, to tell the untold stories, not just to always be negative and think South Africa is just a bad country that the media tells us to hear. We actually have a lot of things that we can celebrate as, as the citizens, besides being depressed and being negative because of what the media is telling us. So we aim to inform, to tell stories that are motivational, uh, positive, and to also add value in, in someone else's life. There are so many good things you, that can happen when you eat plasmus. Basically, you can develop a good positive mindset. You, just, you don't just get to be negative. Uh, say you wake up today and you come across news that are negative, they're always going to affect your day. So when you read plasmus, you are sure to always be inspired yeah. and to think positive and to always believe cool. things can always be better. So what Plasmus does, it's a, we tell the untold stories. We recently did a story with uh, another guy called John Klo. John Klo will be graduating with the University of Tuani. He's a former taxi driver. So I know everyone else really takes drivers are horrible and negative guys, but you no, know, there are stories like Joe that we want to tell as Plasmus. So the challenge we encounter as Plasmus is that we we just a small team of 11 young, hungry people. So we don't have funding from anyone else in terms of running the whole operations. It's going to bring stories, traveling, doing everything. So we, we rather didn't want to wait for funding. We just wanted to use whatever that we have. So we decided, let's use what we have to get where we want. So we recently launched Plasmus online. Plus news launching online doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to go and print anything in the future. So by launching it online, it's, it's, it's a less job and money spending for us because while we launch online, we basically don't spend much. What we do, we find someone who's good with a you know, great website and they did it for us. Everyone is welcome to check Plus News by just going through on your phone right now and just click www.plusnews.co.za. We're not on Google yet, which, but we're working on it. 
but we hope to, to grow and be one of the, the biggest publications that tell all the positive news. A big round of applause for this guy. We took the bite and he really wasn't prepared. Like, I was well done, well done. Questions? I need one question. One person to ask a question. Um, um, no, I'm not that question. I'm not part of that one. Go for it. Hi, Mr. Mbaba. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share my story. I want to commend you for your spirit, your energy. I think you've got yeah, you have that great energy. My question is, what is your, your business model? In other words, what is your revenue model? How are you making money? Thank you. Just like any other business, we're looking to do advertising. But the best thing about Plasma is that we don't wanna we don't wanna limit ourselves. We wanna give advertising to small businesses that can afford the big media publication advertising. So by advertising more small businesses, that can help us raise our revenue in partnership. Thank you so much, um, Governor Mohan. Yeah, well done. Thank you so much. Um, last time to come through is um, Miboni. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, uh, Yali lady. Good evening, everybody. My name is Miboni, and like most of you here, I'm stubborn. Yes, I'm a star. I'm born. I manufacture billboards. I manufacture conference bags from used billboards. The world is going back to basics, back to manufacturing, back to recycling. So what I do is I I market your event in reverse. So when you give me a billboard to make a conference bag for you, I use it for the next event for your business so that you can market your business. Well, the, when the business profit came over, when I was at SAP Kickstart, he was not impressed with the conditions that I was working in. And then I went back, now I'm working at my mother's garage. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a, um, a ship container so that I can have my business in a box. So I want to have a recycled ship container where I recycle used billboards that SAB gave me so that I can make conference bags and employ more people so that I can create jobs. Thank you. Right, well done. Um, one question for uh, the young lady. Did you take it? No take it? No question. Whatsoever. So you guys, you got it. So you understand everything that she said. Makes absolute sense. Okay, so there's a hand there. Uh, just ask. It. Okay, so just shoot. Please raise your, raise your voice. Can I just repeat the question? So, in terms of demand, how many people are you looking to buy? Yeah, to buy the product. Yeah, that, did I get the question? So, everyone got the question. Cool. Currently, the people who are looking and buying the product are um, companies because they don't know what to do with their old banners or marketing marketing banners or billboard. So, what they do instead of taking it to landfill, they bring it to me and then I resell it to them, even event planners. So the demand is there. I just need to create more jobs, get more orders. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> um, thank you, guys. Please vote um, for your your favorite entrepreneur. Please put your beautiful mark or number there. Um, we've got Mulemo from uh, Relocate. And we had uh, Mkhanganis uh, and his, uh, his partner from the Dog Drop. And we had uh, Gabriel Mahali from the newspaper. And we bought him just so now, and Zuri, who is from uh, Wind Rail Designs. So please um, bring the guys, and uh, with Lundi and the team, uh, they will come later to collect so they can consolidate this course. Now, okay, so. So you need to tear the part that has your scores and uh, please pass it to the side. 
and uh, we'll come and collect now. And with that, thank you guys. Uh, congratulations to the boys that pitched. It's, uh, it's really not an easy, an easy thing. And I will hand over to the boss of the, of the, of the night. <laughs> guys, can you give him a round of applause? He wrote it, right? Um, I think it's an amazing thing for us to have one of the people who are the champions of that and that have given us um, so much support over the years. SAB Kickstarter has in fact been one of our, our biggest partners um, throughout the country. And they, they, they're the one company that scaled us at a national level and helped us to gain traction at an international level. We've been able to travel all over the place. We've launched the hookup in Israel, even launched it in uh, Australia. So it's an amazing thing when a big corporate uh, brand partners with a small entity. Um, I will be taking this voted, I thought. Alright, please just let's complete that. You're gonna tear that uh, the, the program down the middle. I just wanna just check quickly what we can see. All right, as soon as we voted, the other thing that we want to make sure that we, we gather, um, we've got a referral form. Did you see it? You might have been distracted, right? Oh, we <laughs> collected a lot of like guys, four files, four files. You see, these are the kind of things that kind of make the text. What we're trying to do here is build our entrepreneurial network by ensuring that if you know somebody that you think would benefit from a networking function like this, you put their name down so that we can contact them and tell them about this great letter. That's the purpose of it. So if you do have somebody that you're thinking of that you can refer to us or that you can tell about if they want to pitch or if they just want to be exposed to an entrepreneurial network, um, we'd love it if you can put their details down. And, and you can also give us a feedback um, just in terms of what you think about what's going on here. Um, any suggestions, recommendations, or just comments, like any commentary that you think is relevant for you. All right, thank you. Anybody who still has the program? Who hasn't had it? All right, we're going to jump into the next segment. The next segment is called the Networking Mixer. It's exciting for me, and I'm sure by the end of it, it's going to be very exciting for you. Trust me on that. We take exactly 10 minutes to do it. Each person has got exactly 10, uh, 60 seconds to engage in a group of 10. If somebody goes over there, if somebody starts working on about their aunties and moms and whatever, they start telling you their life story and how sad it is. Tell them to mom, shut up. Please. This is an entrepreneurial network. You're not interested in your pity party. Don't tell us how, how you've gone through Tim or two to get your Guys, like, hold us, hold us. It's exactly 60 seconds. It's an elevator pitch. And therefore, when you engage a group, a community of people, ensure that you're adding value to it. Ensure that you're not extracting or you're not taking all that, you're adding that to the collective. That is the purpose, and that's the purpose of it. Introduce yourself, and it will open up the doorway for you to ensure that you can connect with those people after, you, after we've done the official proceedings. So, randomly, we're going to stand up, groups of 10. If you came with your friend, step away from them. If you came with your wife, your friend, whoever, step away from them. You need to know new people. Exactly 10 people in the group. Let's get up. 10 groups, I mean 10 people in a group. Let's move guys, time is moving. We're timing it. Groups of 10, random, let's move, let's move. Time is moving, we're timing this. If you don't do it fast enough, somebody won't have time. Somebody won't have enough time to introduce themselves. Let's move guys, we're watching you. Groups of 10, start. Move away from your friends. If you've met somebody, move away from them. You don't want to know them, you already know them. Groups of 10, not groups of 3, not 2, not 5, 10. Let's move. Start, start. Don't wait, start.
Time up, guys. Time up. Can you take our seats, please? Sorry if you have been engaged. I didn't give you extra time. Let's take our seats. Let's respect the program. Let's move. Let's take our seats, guys. Let's take our seats. Let's take our seats. We're about to get started to the next uh, segment. Guys at the back, let's take our seats. Take our seats, let's take our seats. The guys at the back, come on, come on. Can I be a seat in company? Can I take our seats, please? Gentlemen in the purple blazer, let's move over there. At the back, let's take our seats. Theo, behave. Let's take our seats, guys. All right, guys, was that enough time? Can we have a roving mic? Uh, would you take feedback? Um, bit of feedback. Would like to know what you think about the networking mixer. Anybody? Oh, maybe over there. Yeah? Hi, I'm Lucy. I think it's a great idea. I wish we had some friends to get around to everybody. Okay, um, just turn into the inside of your program. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold you guys accountable. The second segment there, it says the networking mix of the hookup. Can everybody see that? All right, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll have a chat afterwards. Anybody else? Be back. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, my name is Maxima Maxima Petrosoto. I think it's a really great initiative. I'll just make one suggestion. Some people tend to go a bit overboard for one minute. So if maybe we can have that premium as a little score each minute, <laughs> we actually get everyone an opportunity to talk. Thank you very much. But, but 
we're giving you the power. Why did you hold them accountable? To tell them to shut up, bro. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah? Hi, my name is Bongani. I think it presents a great opportunity to sell yourself in a short space of time. And I've done that the first time I was here, and I've been looking at the whole thing. Boom. Oh, boom, yeah, it's very good to hear. Hi, guys. Anybody else? Any chance? Before we close that, let, let's ask the Dutchies. Were you guys in the group as well? No? Yes, you were. What did you think, sir? I'm, I'm a bit of a big difficult uh, participant because I represent the embassy. And we are here to let people like you and you know, the excited bits of the data on orange corners. So it's going really to be very interesting to see how young people you know, how they think, how they pitch themselves. It's critical. And, um, okay, thank you. There was a lady behind you, guys. Hi, everyone. I am Precious from Inactive Beauty. Um, this is our first time here, actually, and I'm so overwhelmed by everything that's going on. I feel like this is, yeah, it's a great initiative, and it's, it's a good opportunity for everyone else and um, as, as students. Yeah. You feel very inspired. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Tsepo, well done. Well done, I need to bring you there. This is Benji, we see you. Um, the next segment is what we call the Masterclass. And I'm very excited because for a change, we've got people who are not from here. Um, it's a very mix of people. And it's like a great opportunity for us to get through what's going on out there. Um, I'm first going to... Are they... Okay, yeah, whatever. I'm going to call up Patrick first from Lesotho and him first because Lesotho uh, celebrated their one year anniversary last night and I was there. Mind blown. Can you give him a round of applause? Patrick from Lesotho. He's from Tangeri. And then we've got uh, Constantine Yanzero. Uh, he's from Zimbabwe, uh, Harare. He represents uh, B2C co working spaces, but he's the founder and he represents the Global Institute. Can you give him a round of applause, guys? And then we've got uh, Charles. Charles is from House Enterprise, he's from House City. Um, that is in the UK. I visited them a couple of years ago and we've been friends ever since. Round of applause. We've got Hi Guy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It just has, it's only one who's sitting on the panel, right? Okay, so I almost went over board over here. And then we've got our host, right? Who am I missing before? Not that anything. But, um... <laughs> so somebody was meant to represent the South African view, and he's got a bit of a, you know, something. Yeah, so we're not going to call him. So we're going to introduce our host for, for the session. Uh, his name is OP, and you've had the pleasure of having a host. The, the pitching session, and he's going to take over from there. Can you give him a round of applause? Okay, okay. take over, okay? So, so why is he going to do it like Yeah, because he can speak, this guy. Because oh. he can speak before a mic, so his truth is uh, it's, it's not without really problem. So he must come. Soldier, oh, soldier, what's the right? He would have come all the way, you know, so the reverse and stuff. And, 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 and problem. Okay, cool. Good night. Uh, Good evening, guys. I always say good night. So, I'm going to have one of you guys with the mic. Um, so, this is the first time I'm doing this thing, so you know, it's, um, it's, it's very unusual for me to be hosting a master class, right? Because I'm usually on the other side. Uh, the master class. But I, I, when they said guys from, from Britain are around, I wonder. But yeah. so as an entrepreneur, what the heck happened with that Britain exit stuff? Like, what the I, I, guys, I'm going to learn. So, Britain exists from the what? EU. And I'm thinking, so, what the hell does that mean? So, does it mean now I'm losing more clients? Um, I've got more clients? Or, what, what stage do you guys even have? What stage do you guys have even have in that place of stuff? Welcome, everyone. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for welcoming us to Johannesburg. The British people have made one of the most stupidest decisions they've ever made. Um, just as other countries in the continents across the world are coming together, whether it's in America, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in Asia, we decide that we don't want to apparently work with our European partners. 
Now, I find it strange that I can have a good relationship with somebody from France, from Germany, Germany Lithuania, but somehow nearly 56% of the British people actually make a decision that means it's going to be more difficult for me. There's no doubt that you know, the EU, a bit like anything, any economic unit, actually has its problems, and the EU has many problems. But just exiting from it is absolutely barmy. And certainly it's bad for the city of Hull, we're a European city, we've been trading with Europe for over a thousand years. So we'll just have to wait and see. But for some of us that actually still hope that we won't end up exiting and that things will change and common sense will prevail. Well, let's, let's hope constant that you mentioned prevail. Mm -hmm. I was hoping you could use the word dumbest as opposed to stupid. Stupid. But anyway, so one of the things that we usually you know encourage among you know, entrepreneurs is to think global. And I think we probably have had this many times. And trying to know the South African guys, when they hear about this thing, you know, and competitively speaking, guys from Zimbabwe and the Sotho, about where this positions entrepreneurs, opportunities, what it means, and how to how to start developing products or services in line with what's going on in the world. Let's make of that. Thanks, Ruby. Uh, you asked a very, very interesting question about Brexit because I think for the Swedish entrepreneurs, um, it means two different customs uh, arrangements now. The initial arrangement that you are importing the European Union. We had the benefit of having the British market, but with the UK leaving, um, that means you have to you have twice the work. Um, it's especially challenging for an entrepreneur in the Sunday because, as I'm sure you can imagine, the market is very small. Market of 2 million, which is smaller than the, market, the Soweto market, which is pretty small. I have no choice but to look outside of the the next closest market is the African market. It's not in this that it's close to the US in another country. So the Brexit process is very major in any other region in the world because South Africa sneezes, the super catches a call. It can get rid of pretty well. From my side, um, from Gerben, essentially is one of the largest ports, and that being Australia. Very strong sense of trade um, note in that the continent. And Brexit can do like what they first did. What is Brexit at the time? So, what it meant was that um, I got a call from a lot of the um, trade agencies from the UK, um, Manchester, Midas, for example, in uh, Johannesburg, that were now saying, look, Brexit happened. We are still going to the business of the day. And we're still looking to develop those strong relationships with German businesses that are now looking to position themselves to those external markets. So that's what it meant for us with the global perspective. Brexit for Zimbabwe was sort of welcome, you know, in a way. Um, <laughs> Britain for the longest time, uh, due to the agreement of uh, our government and uh, its team leader, it was sort of like traveling because for sanctions. Which is sanctions for their own reasons is a good thing. Uh, but what sanctions means for most of us, especially for us entrepreneurs, is it forces us into a corner. And as much as it might push us in terms of it, uh, coming up with new ideas, right? It actually is sort of like uh, just as our mind. And um, with Britain going out of um, the European Union, which may not be pressure. Sort of like uh, other countries started looking sideways. Uh, we don't know what it means in the next coming month, but uh, for us, it's been an interesting, uh, interesting thing. All right, so you guys are aware that Mark Zuckerberg is in, I think he's going to Kenya now. He's already in Kenya. Right? Is he coming to South Africa? Anyway, he might not be coming. I think he's not coming. So, so now, in that context, so why aren't you guys going to Nigeria or Kenya? Why are you guys in South Africa? I mean, you flew all the way, coming back to South Africa. What, 
what the hell is your story? How are you here? And what is it about entrepreneurship or is the ecosystem that has made you guys jump Nigeria, Ghana, and um, uh, Kenya to come down here? Uh, it's quite simple. It's called Tweet. Um, we have a tweet from Costa, and we're discussing about how we can possibly work together and exchange ideas. He then was hoping to come over to the UK, uh, didn't come. He said that there was this strange man that wanted to pop over from Johannesburg, Todd Webber, he was a bit of a laugh, and he was entertainers, and but more importantly, it could be a good opportunity. Webber came over, and we fell in love with what the hookup dinner was doing. Um, in terms of South Africa, to my mind, it's actually quite simple, and I'll, I'll take this from a political angle. South Africa is a country that will end up dominating at least Africa and possibly quite a large area of the economic part of the world, simply because it's one of the few countries I've actually been to where there was a real determination. Despite whatever issues or problems you might have, you want to be enterprising. So, in port, in, in the port of Hull, we lost our enterprising dream over 100 years ago, and we just started it back with our young people. I mean, I've spent with uh, Kit and Haggai and Thomas having to go back because they had a job to do to, today in Hull, going around uh, Soweto, Alexandra, uh, some parts of Johannesburg, talking to South Africans uh, who actually want to do something to make their country profitable their families to actually have a different lifestyle and to change their communities. That's why I went into business and I failed. Um, and one of the reasons I failed is because there wasn't people around me that could support me. Uh, here in South Africa, I see it. Now you might say you've got all those things in England. Yes, we have, but the difference is that they're all very organized. They're all very boring. They're all very shared, tired suits and you've got to present yourself in such a way that everybody will listen to you because of what you might think as opposed to what you can do. And the thing about the hookup dinner is it's very informal. Uh, I've just seen a great way of finding out from Kit what he does in 60 seconds. He normally takes about two hours <laughs> to go on to me about digital stuff because it just goes way over my head. So it, the simple answer is, um, you, you, you guys have got a lot to teach us about working together in an informal way. And that's why we're here, and that's why we're going to continue this partnership uh, with the Hubbard here and you set themselves. And being blunt about it, on the other side of Brexit, if those people actually believe that it will open up markets from other parts of the world, then being blunt about it, come and sell your products and services because the ones I've seen so far are very, very good. So, so you love the kids, you know, I call it the kids, they all cause it the kids. And it's very chaotic here, yeah, nothing is really happening, but nice. it's a lot of opportunity to take advantage of. I, I love it, I, I love it. I think it's, you know, all entrepreneurs kind of be rejoicing about it. But if you went to UK for almost a month or so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was not about myself. So, of course, we want to find out where you're born and are out there. You know, that's besides the point. The point that we want to find out, though, is were you, were you shocked when you're out there as a, as a South African entrepreneur that has you know, ideas of how you can start up a business, run a business, you know, some of the things that you use? You know, I think there's a you know, going to be locally around, you know, there's a flag or you know, business models, canvases, and stuff. People now are saying, you know what, this business plan waste time. It's times, it's user, you know, game seat, and you're know, good to go. And when you went that side, what what did you get? I mean, you know, these guys are now here, they just say they love, they love everything about this place. Okay, so let me I talk to them in this issue about the food. So I mean, I don't like to go back to them. But anyway, um, so here I am, young, young entrepreneur, and I took a big thing that I'm exposed to from my food. Uh, but when you get off the flight and you're sitting at the airport and you're sitting at the traffic station and you're wondering what's my next move, people honestly don't put it down that you do Hey, I'm lost in my train way. They don't, they just move along. 
And the sheer pace and the sheer measure of the way they work is phenomenal. Um, do you ever walk down the center and the number of are working very hard? Because honestly, what we really need to do is we need to take a deep dive and buy that ticket and go to the repo. But in terms of tools and uh, the work that the entrepreneurs have in the UK, reality is we're not that very different. I think um, if it all from a scientific perspective, I'm sure that we have a faith in it. We have the wings, we have the bats, we have the ability in the very sort of here system that is Africa. But more importantly, where we do that, and this is where you come from, is the share with the community. So we usually see this both of the co work in the space of the world, right? And you think well, these people probably have uh, average intelligence. Just really cool photos. That's what they are. They're just really cool photos. And um, I, I, I feel like the fact that um, if they, people really take time and master their craft. Tools. One of the biggest things that, um, as I think that we ought to learn, the art of brand, the art of design, the art of user experience, the art of user interface. I think that is something that is very, very sort of crucial. And if you look around, we're in Mabone right now. What we see, and a lot of paintings that we see are not really, but they are international artists coming into the cityscape of Johannesburg and looking to paint us. Tremendous value that we could take in terms of um, the, the design aspect. In terms of the business modeling and et cetera, et cetera. Need a business plan. You don't need a business plan. You don't need a business plan. Need is a minimum viable plan. Essentially, getting off your ass and get work. Because no one really sits down with you if you still can talk about, hey, here's a plan. No, it doesn't work like that. So, an MVP. Do you share the sentiments? Guys, I mean, you went to USA, you spent what, seven? Eight weeks the other side of the world. Business is good. I'm wondering. So, is there anyone from CJ here, CIFA, uh, IDC, uh, USAID? Is there anyone under here from South African GP? Anyone from GP? NYDA? Okay, guys, please, can you cheat? Quote this man. He's saying you do not need a business plan. And take these people that I've mentioned. And ask them if they agree. What do you guys think? I agree 100. Um, I, I I I would probably even go a step further. You probably don't even need. You probably don't even need any business education. I honestly think that the education system on this continent is rigged because you go into business and. You want to go into business with a one plus one formula, and the one plus one formula in business actually doesn't work. You want to approach business with a stranger, and a business plan will probably put a stranger on your business plan. Get out of the building and navigate your market for your product. Does your product make sense? Is it logical for you to go into that business? Who's going to buy it? Those are simple logical questions in the MBA or a business degree. So, yes, I agree. You don't need a business plan. Uh, the first thing I'll say is uh, for funding. So I would. But you raise it, you put it in. And uh, for me, there's no single business plan or what would have planned. That survives first contact with the market. No matter which way you plan it, it's not going to survive first contact with the market. I think for me, the great business for this continent, uh, not the people with nice jackets, I think it's the mothers, right? <laughs> it's the mothers who, who took us to school selling McBean, uh, selling Bloom Jack. I can't spend um, a month of mine in the money that I make. Right. Um, my financial literacy skills are zero. But these guys have been doing it for 30 years. They've sent us to prestigious schools and everything. 
for the African person, I think we now need to start tapping into those uh, African sensibilities, that's what I call right? And innovate around that. We create our own solution in our own market. We are not living in a modern market, we are living in a transitional economy. Right? Because we are transitioning. We are called third world, we are jumping to the second world. We are, obviously, the transition is to all the first world. The greatest, I think, uh, disadvantage that we have is we're living in a global village. When I think seven comes out today in the UK and in the US, and you have it. But yet, our infrastructure and our education system is still a big one. So, we're expected to compete at the first world level and we're not able to. And we are great in the market according to that level. Right? And we, I don't know if it's foolishness, we want to compete at that level. We should be able to ground our own solution. I think this plan is great. This is more than numbers, it's great as well. But can we adjust it to our African sensibilities to the things that are working here? Not in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is a knowledge economy. But they are pushing things which are in the future. Like right now, SpaceX is pushing the iPod. Right? The iPod probably won't never. But they're putting a lot of money into it. And we value our ideas according to that. What are the solutions that we're looking for? Africa, Africa's biggest problems are access is what? It's just access. Access to clean water, access to education, access to information, access, that's what we're looking for. Can we, as Africans, right, start tapping into the knowledge and information that we have to start solving those problems? And not to create Instagram. Instagram is great in the Silicon Valley, but what use would we have for it as an African? Uh, uh, maybe in, 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 in Zimbabwe, for instance. Um, there's a statistic, statistic which always pisses me off. There are more mobile phones on the African continent than there are two countries. But it's a fact. There are more people with, with mobile phones than there are people with electricity. Those, that's our reality. If you're going to make a business plan around those things, yes. If not... <laughs> So there's a lot of that. Our education system is great. <laughs> so we've been following the um, protests about the uh, you know, language policy, air policy in South Africa, and uh, maybe, uh, maybe it is a great. I'm not sure if we're going to change it or you guys come with solutions and innovate around, around that. Um, but I'm excited about what, what Costa uh, as I just mentioned now, and if when you guys arrived, uh, or whatever brief you got about South Africa and the state of, of the country, um, from an entrepreneurship perspective, given what you guys do on the other side of the, of the world, what, what struck you about you know, the, the profile of the South African entrepreneur and what it is that kind of you know, compares to a uh, typical entrepreneur on the other side? I think the first thing we noticed was how bad your traffic is from the airport into Joburg. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because in order to move products, you need good systems, whether it be road, whether it be rail, or whether it be air. And areas like Johannesburg obviously suffer because of the poor road system. Um, but believe it or not, there are many cities in the United Kingdom that have the same problem. So going back to what you said about entrepreneurs, there are no real differences. An entrepreneur is an entrepreneur. Somebody, I mean, with an expression, an entrepreneur turns now into summer. And basically what that means in Yorkshire is that, you know, somebody will say you can't do it and then you go ahead and do it. Somebody will say you can't find funding for it and you don't find funding for it. And what I've seen in South Africa so far is that despite the economic issues and despite the political issues, entrepreneurs are going out and doing it. And one of the things that I've actually said to all the young people I've met is that if you could harness the power of the entrepreneur in South Africa into your political system, you have one of the best economies in the world. Because in other parts of the world, they don't tend to want to change. 
And I think your entrepreneurs also want to change the way your country works and actually want to do something positive. Whereas in other parts of the world, there seems to be this tendency, apart from social entrepreneurs and those that have a corporate social responsibility, they seem to think it's all about money. And being in business is, believe it or not, it's not all about money. It's about the difference that you can actually make with your products and services. And going back to business plans and universities, I, I technically am now a funder. I, I, I set up a thing called the Enterprise Bank that gives grants to, to young people. And yes, unfortunately, we have to have a business plan. But the reality is the thing that we invest in the most, the personality of the young person, and the worst, I have to say this, the worst young people that actually come forward for support are those who've got business degrees. Because what happens is that you talk what a business is, you're not taught about how a business operates. And I find it absolutely bizarre that I can go in the state in home and, and talk to some young people and they talk about making money. I'll go to the university and they start talking to me about cash flow, about margins, and then I say, but what are you selling? And they can't explain what they're selling. And so as a good friend of mine, Tony Robinson says, there are three things that you need. You need a good product and service and believe in it. You need to ensure that your cash flow actually works, and you need to enjoy what you're doing. And I get the feeling that sometimes a lot of people that come out of the university with business degrees don't actually enjoy running businesses because they find it very difficult because they don't necessarily have the skills about people, about managing people. Managing the workforce of an entrepreneur is one of the hardest things you can do. Working with another entrepreneur is one of the hardest things you can do. Sadly, those sorts of things are not taught at university. Are they kids? No. Yeah. And he went to university, so he should know. Hi, guy. Thanks, sir. So, so, so what I'm hearing is that there's a recognition that, of course, you know, business plan is still an environment because practically speaking, to go past the, you know, the heavens, you want to have to get it done. Right? Um, but over and above that, I think you guys are saying, you've got to understand your product, your MVP, how to sell it, how to brand it, what solutions you bring to the table correctly. So let me just ask one more question and then invite you guys to ask a further question. One of the things, given the, the pitches that we've had today, so someone pitches for a minute, for a minute or so, right? Uh, someone is, is listening to that pitch and investors listening to the same one. I actually like that idea. I like that product I want to invest in, right? What I have always been interested in is how do we enable the entrepreneurs to have the skill to convert? So, so there's an expressed in interest from the investor that says, you know what? I've had to talk about your uh, your relocation. I've had to talk about your uh, wind rain. I've had to talk about your newspaper and uh, Starboard. You know what? I want 30% of that at a value of this much. Now, there's an, an express difference. So how do I convert? So what are the things, steps two or three or five, to actually make that opportunity or that deal to actually flow into your bank account and start deploying that capital? I'm wondering, from your travels, from your experience in different countries, or what you've done before, what are those two or three things that an entrepreneur should be able to follow through or do, or keep in mind, to be able to convert these investment opportunities? Very interesting question. Um, first and foremost, it's really important to stay focused. Um, the term investment, is a very daunting term. It's also very exciting. When someone says, I'm going to give you money to give you to, to make a crazy idea reality. And that money can actually make you lose focus on why you have this crazy idea in the first place. So stay focused and first of all, do I really need this kind of arrangement? Do I need this investment in this way? Once you figure that out, um, is it going to help me achieve my, my efforts for the business? Is it going to make, help me make an impact? Is it going to help me um, uh, uh, scale my business to the level that I want it to go to? Um, that's what I think. Uh, for me, if you want to close an investment, uh, three things scalability, replication, and growth. 
Your idea must be scalable. It should have money. So it should be revenue, right? So you come with a bottle of water, you can business the MVP at uh at the negotiation of it. Can't convince you the MVP, show me how you are going to scale it. You need to replicate it in different ecosystems. Because Africa is a bit of a business. I cannot put in uh, focus on this about the market and the second market is small. We need to go to the continent. Is there growth uh, beyond that? Uh, I think something else. Those are the three things for me. Just from my side, I think uh, so I'm trying to record. So I'm, I'm basically some of the individual. But not a sort of track record of how well you work your business by the way how many businesses or business ventures that you fail. Because that ability to fail and that ability to learn from the failing and pursue the ability to accelerate yourself as an individual. I mean, just to give you a little background, um, from where I'm from, uh, Durban is in the middle of nowhere, basically. Um, but in the space of two years, five venture firms, uh, so five high net worth individuals, because of that tax break, had to hold their funds simply because there were no bankable businesses within the ecosystem at the time. Now, compare that to the proposal to um, Johannesburg, where there's a huge investment community. And there's, well, there's the good old state town, right? It's the first world country in the world, other country. Um, but then they've got their own sort of system. So from an individual perspective, I would think the ability to have that experience and that experience in failure and having capable, tangible results from failure and playing it into a new business model together. Charles? Uh, it's very easy for me because that's what I do. Um, I need to believe that the person in front of me has belief in what they want to do. I need to believe that they know the numbers. So many times entrepreneurs come and make the pitch and they actually don't know the numbers. Uh, and actually, if you don't know the numbers, how on earth do you expect to make the money? Um, so there's that. And the third and most important thing for me, to be perfectly honest, is that they've got to have something about them, just that little spark. And the only thing I, and I'm sorry I keep going back because I was really impressed when we went to Alexander. We went with, to talk to an organization called This Kids that work with uh, primary school and secondary school kids. And I decided that those kids were going to have to pitch to me. We were there to listen to what they were doing. And I said, come on then, we're going to pitch. So there was this absolute look of horror on the kids' faces. And then it was, oh, well, I'll be I'll be there. So we went outside in, in the yard and we listened to these kids. You know, they, they only had a brief idea, but they had a passion about it. So I could believe what they believed in. They knew their numbers. It's so many entrepreneurs, but they had that, they had that click. And that click means it's where me saying they're worth the investment. So at the end of the day, it's that uniqueness about you as the individuals. I assume you know lots of different things when you're coming to make a pitch. Because if you don't, then it's pointless exercise. And I just need to see that, just that little something, that little cheapness, that, that element of arrogance, that yeah. element of commitment, that element that Costa always gives me when he stares at me. You know, just something that makes me think that person is where I'm supporting. Fantastic. So I'm going to invite one or two questions from the floor. Guys, you've had a lot of stuff from this guy. Um, I need a roving mind. Um, is there a room? Can I give you another mind? Um, and I'll hold this for the guys. So please be brief. Uh, concise, straight to the point. We don't want your history or your blood type. Uh, I, it's not a question. It's uh, something that I wanted to put as a challenge to time with this guy. When are we going to have uh, crowdfunding and, and, and then angel investors, like angel investors? But I think you guys are at the end where you can start now being angel investors. You can start doing crowdfunding for us. So entrepreneurs that come in and want to manage to do things, and then we can copy some money so that they can achieve whatever they want to achieve. Excellent question. They're always perfect to answer that. Not now, late. It's got a perfect script to that question. Okay. Hello, my name is Wang Jinde. Um, so I've been reading Capitalist Ledger and I've got a very random question. So I wrote it down. 
As Africans, are we in a position to refine our minerals and sell them to the rest of the world as opposed to the British, Spaniards, or the French, drilling through the African soil and taking the minerals, refining them, and selling them back to us? Um, what would that mean for the entrepreneurial spread of Africa and for our economy? Okay, so that's Chico Nyani there, the capital leader. So, I need to find my, is that a question? Okay, so we need to make an exception. So we wanted two questions. This is the first level of that, so we need to throw that question. Please go for it. Okay, so Charles uh, spoke a lot about entrepreneurs not knowing their numbers. Now I want to um, just link that with you having said that education is rich. What does unrigged education look like? What is it? Okay, cool. So guys, who wants to take the Chigonian equation from capitalist nigga? Okay. So I'm gonna Costa, you wanna and um, the, the crowdfunding you'll make a comment on it. Um, do you wanna make a comment on the capital sneaker question? You don't mind. Okay. So guys please be brief. I think we can. And I think it's a conversation that we've been having for a long time. Uh, it depends on representation of the youth, right? I think it's time like if you look in my country and now people are over here to in the street and that's all good. I think it's time to start delivering legislation that enables that thing. Going in the street will not change it. We should be able to challenge the constitution that allows our government to mortgage our resources and our minerals to other people. That's where we should start. So I think. Um, I'll take a stab at it. Uh, well, it's important to identify what the value chain is. Um, what are the different components in mining the diamond and getting it getting it to Belgium and uh, putting it on someone's finger. Uh, entrepreneurs to identify those different uh, cogs in the value chain uh, and taking taking advantage of those. Uh, I'll, I'll make a very brief example. In this room we have diamonds, but we also have water. Uh, we have entrepreneurs that are securing water on it and working water for it. Um, Sudo has one of the highest qualities of water, uh, rivaled only by French water. But for the longest time, we've been importing water from the local areas and we have not. Uh, but we saw that as an opportunity. We said, let's put this out. It's, it's difficult because we have quite a lot of investment, which you know, not comes from foreign companies that come in the beginning. But we just have to start small and get to our cost and venture. In terms of one of the process in the crowdfunding, I think it speaks to this one coming into the economic system. So, just a basic question if someone on the road would ask you to get from five grand, why would you get from five grand? Sorry, can we get the guys on the back to kind of keep quiet? We've still got an event. And if you can't, please leave because you're being very rude. Thank you. So, just going back to that question, someone came to me and said, Can I please have five grand? I want to buy a little bit. How often do you give it to me? Not as much. Not as much. That's why I was saying when putting a challenge to the staff, yes. you say, can, Can't you become a platform? You say, Now, can we start that uh, crowdfunding platform? And then you, you know, again, you know how to identify it. As we have been speaking about, do they know their numbers? Do they know their plan? Definitely. You will now start to say, Can we invest in that? Definitely. And what they are now addressing is a cultural shift, a cultural mindset in terms of how much, um, how many more entrepreneurs are we engaging on platforms like the whole company. And if at all, we do not realize that you actually have a crowdsourcing platform right now. Right. Thanks. Uh, okay. Briefly, on that question of minerals and what, what it means for entrepreneurs. I think you've got to remember that sadly through humankind, um, cultures of exploiting other cultures. Uh, believe it or not, we were exploited by the Romans. A lot of our iron ore and other precious metals were dug up over 2,000 years ago. And it's sadly in the human nature to exploit another human being. It's a fact of life. What has to be done, and I, I find it very difficult to comment about because I don't know much about, about your system, but the about it. One of the things that capitalism has to do is realize that everybody's part of the system. system you've also got to earn. So, in a sense, your government has to look at that partnership arrangement 
with whoever has those arrangements removing those precious minerals uh, from your air and how it's then used. The issue is not the digging. The issue is what happens to the profits from that digging and whoever does that digging for them to come back to South Africa. Simple as that. Quickly, what is on the education I'm not sure because I'm, I'm, I'm part of that education system. I've gone through it. So I'm not sure I that. But I can say um, the basics that you need is you need to be able to come to be able to identify uh, uh, problems to solutions. If you can make logic, if you can, if you can come, you should be able to give to give an investor the number. But but not only that, um, going through an education system, we sort of tend to be a bit more cautious. Uh, educated people are very risk averse, and being risk averse in any business environment is a big problem. Because we just need to get out of the building and say, look, I'm onto something, I know it, let me just do it. That's all you need to do. You don't need an idea. Um, so, before you think I'm advocating for people to not go to school, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, don't, don't look at a degree or an MBA as, as, as the holy grail to make business, to make business work. Um, I, I don't have to mention that some of the Greatest entrepreneurs in the world, we don't have a single group of So, logic and encounter. That's all. Fantastic. Thanks so much, guys. You guys have been brilliant. Round of applause to our guys. Um, I think my job is, is done. You guys were, were amazing. I think we've tried to get as much uh, out of these guys. Um, it's up to you guys to go and do, you know, deploy and deploy. Invest or do whatever this that the guys have suggested. My my parting shot is really there was a comment about supply chain and value chain. Really, don't overcomplicate things. Just identify a niche in the value chain, stick to that standard of value chain, it's a line, and then pass whatever needs to be passed. That's it. That's really what, what it is. Really, we're all in an ecosystem, an ecosystem, and pass the food and forget about other things. Other people will worry about it. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks so much. Can you give them a round of applause again, guys? Well done. It's amazing that two years ago, <laughs> over a tweet, I found myself in the house sitting in a panel and discussing entrepreneurial stuff. And two years later, you're sitting in Johannesburg engaging in it. And it's more than that. We've launched a partnership with Health City as the hookup dinner. And it's an exciting one. A really, really, really exciting one. Do you want to tell them a bit about what, what you do with the Youth Enterprise Bank Trust? Well, first of all, I want to know what are these sheep doing here? <laughs> sure. Oh, right. And um, basically, what we're hoping to do, we, we've been developing a lot of curriculum materials for teachers to work with young schools schools around a program called Five Point Blossom, where a business, so people like yourselves will learn a group of school children, 30, 150 pounds, which kitting vans is 150 pounds, 3,000 vans over a three month period. And those youngsters, and the most important thing is that they learn a thing called effect and enterprise skills which can't always remember each one but basically it's all about them learning from you what you do so they become your future competitors even but also your potential future partners at the end of the the three month period they decide what happens to the profits for instance in, in england at the moment we're running a, a program where half of the profits are going to a particular charity and half the profits are, are going to the school. But it's the youngsters that make decisions it's about empowerment. Our curriculum materials we made a, a available um, to hook up the dinner. Um, I said earlier, met up with uh, these kids and we decided that we want to work with them as well. Uh, originally, we said we'd invest £250, which is how much? 250 yeah. 
Uh, so anyhow, we've now decided that we're going to increase that to five hundred pounds, specifically because of what of what they do, but also as part of the process. And it's not about money. Trust me, this isn't about money. Is that in November those youngsters, as part of global entrepreneurship, will be telling us some of the things that they've done. We'll also be supporting the hookup dinner, maybe with some of our colleagues and teachers coming over in the future to teach some of those enterprise skills. But more importantly, I want people from the hookup dinner and entrepreneurs involved with it to come over to Hull to come and talk to some of our young people in our schools about some of the difficulties that you've had to actually overcome. Because at the moment, there's this fear in, in England that if we go along and say we can do this, we can do that, we say, oh, yeah, 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 but I bet that. But actually, if uh, businesses are coming over from South Africa and saying, look, we've had all these issues over these years, and if we can do it, you can do it. Um, the other thing that actually the young people made a decision this afternoon, because we were sort of communicating with our chair, is that we're going to change our Let's Talk business, which is a group of, of young entrepreneurs. And we haven't asked your permission yet, but we're going to call it Hook Up Dinner Hub. Um, and simply because that informality about the Hook Up Dinner is the way it's, it's the way forward. So you've actually got hook up in a hole. So you've left you've left Africa now. Uh, you now you, you're now in hole, and we'll, we'll, we'll promote that. At the end of the day, I don't know if this partnership will work. But the one thing that all entrepreneurs have to do is they have to take a risk. So we took a risk in actually coming over here. You took a risk coming to see us. You stayed in one of the strangest hotels in Hull, but that's a, a, another story. And um, you know. I've learned how to be very patient in your traffic and not sing songs at some of your taxi drivers because I'm very impatient about them sort of giving their horns all the time. But at the end of the day, I've enjoyed it and I want South Africans to enjoy Hull. I want Hull kids to enjoy South Africa. So that's what it's about. Hopefully in 10 years time, you know, I'll be in my mid 60s and I'll be coming over and I'll, I'll, I'll be seeing some of those kids that we see today in future when we come over. And they'll be on these panels. Um, and similarly, young people, whether it be from Lesotho, Swaziland, Zimbabwe, Egypt, it doesn't really matter. It's about young people being our futures, and you've got the responsibility to empower them. So that's why I'm hoping that as entrepreneurs, yes, you'll we'll earn any money, but you'll also help hook up in a little work that we're going to be doing in schools along with these kids. Thanks, Charles. Um, Theo, I'm going to give you exactly 180 seconds. So he's going to share with the Dutch Embassy, uh, with also runs the partnership with them. There's something coming up which is pretty exciting for the entrepreneurial community. Please tell me. Are you tiny? It, it does get carried away. Uh, not yet. Just wait a minute. This is not in the 180 seconds. So, hello everybody. Um, I'm Theodore, I'm from the Netherlands Embassy, and I joined the embassy one and a half year ago, and I was asked to do something with entrepreneurship. So I did a research to understand the ecosystem, and then during the visit of our Prime Minister, we launched something called the Orange Corners. What is Orange Corners? Orange Corners is an initiative in collaboration with existing incubators, so we collaborate with Open, we collaborate with Vince University, in the University of the Timor Home Precinct and in Deep Slope at the Georgia Business Hub there. What we do is we subsidize 15 entrepreneurs for a year. So we take them through a process, you get training, mentorship, and different entrepreneurship related courses so that you can go from step A to step Z. In that, we're not alone. Apart from hopefully a long term relationship with the hookup dinner, we're collaborating with Shell, Heineken. Hook up um, the Royal Hasconi that are here, Fobuck, hopefully Unilever, Philips, other companies. And it's all about exposing you to them and then to you. Okay? So in two weeks' time, on the 15th, we will be launching this event here. There's only 70 spots left. So if you want to come, send an email to Levo or to the Hookup Dinner team and join us. And if you think that you're one of them, then you should apply. The deadline is next Tuesday. Go to orangecorners.com slash apply. What's the video?
it's in your nature to create, to explore opportunities and break the barriers of what's possible. You're the builders of solutions that disrupt our futures and transform our world. This is your calling, your responsibility. You're the influencer we define in convention, and we're the business helping you forge that path. At Orange Corners, we offer the best support for early stage startups and entrepreneurs by giving you access to investors and business specialists, great co working space, and world class facilities all under one umbrella to help shape your plans. We're here to mentor you on your mission, keep you agile, unstoppable, unrelenting. We're waiting for you, so what are you waiting for? So So, for those that have been attending the hookup dinner, you can see the pattern of where we're headed. It's about partnerships. We started off with the private sector um, in the form of SAP Kickstart, Standard Bank, Idea, The Dragons. You guys have seen quite a few people come through our platform, and it's all about partnering with these different types of entities to ensure that we create access points for the entrepreneurial community within uh, the hookup dinner so that we can create more stories. Some of you might have heard of stories like the hookup um, skinny spool socks. I uh, met on a entrepreneur last night who was actually displaying um, clothes. And he was very excited to meet me and he said, I want to meet skinny spool, can you give me his number? And I said, look, speak to Patrick and when you come up to Joburg, we'll arrange and you get to meet him. It's just the way we don't realize the impact that is going out there with the little that we are doing, with the little that we have. It's, it's quite something for, an, for a community of entrepreneurs to get together for a common vision. So make sure that you jump in. There's multiple programs that are coming up. And all that we're just asking you is, if you know of somebody, if you know an entrepreneur out there, if you know somebody with ideas, somebody that's looking to start, but they're afraid, they don't know where to go, this is the platform. This is the network. We care. Four years later, we're still here. We're not owned by any entity. We're not owned by corporate. We're not owned by government. We've been doing it ourselves. Anybody that partners with us, they pay. And therefore, we own ourselves. And it's very important for us. We don't stand there and say, we don't, we don't, we don't, sing, we don't sing praises for corporate, we don't sing praises for anybody. We sing praises for entrepreneurs. If, you, if you're a corporate and you get into our network, it's because you add value. And we see it, we live it, we speak it on a daily basis. And we're hoping that we can do more of that. As long as you guys are, are coming along for the journey. On the platform, over 10 million rand has been invested over the past four years. A very small amount of money when you start converting into dollars. Cost, huh? <laughs> but it's a lot of money for us. Over 10 million dollars, I mean over 10 million rand, um, over 10,000 pitches that have taken place on this platform. Imagine, this little platform. More people standing up, sharing their ideas, getting um, feedback from the community, and doing something about that, because they see that somebody believes in what they have to say. And if they feel like nobody's given them a response, they go back and they work it. Us in the background, what you see is the networking event that takes place once a month. What happens in the engine on the background is that we work hard. We've got a bad academy. We train entrepreneurs. We take them through pitch training uh, courses. We take them through all sorts of uh, readiness to ensure that when they stand in front of investors, they're ready. That is our job. Why? Because we produce entrepreneurs. We manufacture them and we sell them. That's how we make a living. If you're an entrepreneur and you're looking for assistance, get in touch with us. It's not simple. Get in touch with us. 
Everybody is approaching us because they're looking for you. Corporates are coming to us and saying, I'm looking for this type of pipeline. I'm looking for entrepreneurs in the fintech space, or I'm looking for entrepreneurs that are in the manufacturing space. It's our job to look for you, to find you, to prepare you, and to present you. And once you've presented, once a transaction takes place, we take a fee from that. So it's in our interest to produce more of the skinny spools of this world, of the lazy Makotis of this world, of the shouting motors of this world, of the mashes of this world. There's a lot of entrepreneurs that are benefiting from this platform. So don't take it for granted. There's a lot that's taking place here. All right. You guys voted for tonight. You voted for a winner. Funny enough, it's somebody that um, decided to volunteer. Kabir, are you here? Stand up, guy. So here, wow. Uh, where's Peggy's? Where's Peggy's? Yeah. Show up, Papa. <laughs> and the reason when I make these type of decisions, I, I need Peggy's so around because he's money man. He's the money man, you know. Yeah. Like <laughs> besides the checks, he, he's the one who cries if the bank account goes dry. So you know. There's, some, there's a little experiment that we've been doing over the few months, and we're going to continue with it because we think it's working. And it, it feeds into what we're launching pretty soon. Um, we're currently having a discussion at a SADC level um, with a couple of the entrepreneurs within the, uh, the SADC region. By SADC, we mean um, the countries that are in the, African, in the south of, of um, uh, Africa. So we're speaking of the Sutu, Botswana, Namibia, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and all the way to, to Mozambique. We are launching something between the lines of a credit union, a youth enterprise bank, and a cooperative bank. Something, there's a mix. We're still trying to find something that, 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 that speaks to us. And, you know, and the, the simple reason why we're doing it is because we want to find our home. And we want to make it easy. We want to drive the cost of doing business down. All the way. You know what I mean? Like, people make like, his stresses. Like, it's a problem. And secondly, we want to make sure that when you travel across borders, we, we do it on a monthly basis. I mean, I get really excited getting out of the country and, and going to see new people and to see what other ecosystems are doing. We want to make sure that when somebody lands here in Joburg or coming from Marseille or coming from Zimbabwe, it's a, it's, a, it's a landing pattern, it's very easy and it doesn't cost them as much. I want to land in Nairobi and call up somebody from oh, the yeah, and, You know what I mean? Like, we've got Jeff in Nairobi. When I, when I get in Nairobi, I don't pay much. We want to increase that network. We want more and more people to do that. When I land in, when I land in Harare, I don't pay. Costa takes care of me. When Costa lands in Joburg, he doesn't pay anything. My wife cooks. You know what I mean? That's what it's about. <laughs> we're a community. So we're trying to make sure that we drive more of that agenda. And part of that speaks to funding. It's, what, it's the feedback that we're getting from the service that are coming out. That entrepreneurs keep on complaining about that. Yeah. So you've selected him as a winner. Uh, I'm going to commit 500 bucks. Thank you so much. You match it. Oh, you'll match it. Oh, cool. Who's that? Who else is jumping on? Yeah? Sorry? 2,000 grand. Boom. Uh, Lonely, please take it. Yeah? Patrick? 1,000 grand. So that's 2,000 plus 1,000. Plus one thousand that's four thousand rand so far. Who else is funding this entrepreneur? And I'm from Nairobi. And he's from Nairobi with two thousand rand. You gotta recognize Jim, two thousand rand right there in Nairobi, bro. Who else is jumping in? We've got to find our own. Let's stop saying great idea. Who cares? Yes, sir. Hundred rand. So that's four thousand one hundred rand in the bank. Let's see what he's gonna do with it. Anybody else? Yes, sir. 200 grand. So that's what? 300? That's 4,000. Lordy, please collect the details. Can you, keep, can you get your hands up and can I get the team collecting the names and the contact details? Let's take care of it. We need to hold them accountable. All the entrepreneurs that we found as a, we find it as a community, we're holding them accountable. That's what we do. And what that does is that when we present them back here and they say, you know, that 2,000 grand that you invested in me, look at how far it's taken. That's what it's about. We don't know where this is going to take us, but in the future, it's going to turn into something else. Yes? How much do you want, bro? It's a good question. Hugs? 
Yay! Yay! We're looking at. Um, if you don't know, it's okay to say I don't know. Twenty-seven thousand rand. Why? To invest back on your business. It's so many things. So tell Mention three things. I'm just, I'm just going to explain. What's the business again? Classics. It's plus news. Plus news. Just remind them what the business does. Okay, plus news, it's a newspaper publication that writes only about positive news. <laughs> All right, we'll cap it. Should I take one more? We need hands for the ones who can the people that said they're gonna put money in put, your, put their hands up. I guess I'll put your hand up. You said you're gonna put money in. I've been to show you, show yourself. Oh, you're here. Just making sure there was somebody else with 200 bucks. Who was it? He's got 4,300 right now. Oh, yes, 4,300. Cost us putting in 500 bucks. That's 4,800 rand. <laughs> Is that what? US dollars or rands? But are you guys trading dollars in Zimbabwe? Come, guy. 500 rand. Okay, so that's 4,800. Can we? Yes? 1,000. So, husband said 1,000. Wife, you said 1,000. That's 2,000, eh? From one family. Can you believe it? So that's what? 5,800. You said you wanted 27,000. We're going to hold you account. Anybody else? I'm closing this up. We've got to go. Anybody else? We're capping it here. Of course, we put you. Our lady over there is collecting your next. Yes, TV? You're putting in 200 bucks. Hold on, hold on. I want to hear you. TV saying she's putting 200 grand in. So, how much is that? That's 6,000. Yes, PO? Talk to me. Is money coming out of the bank? Yes. 1,000 rand. That's 7,000 rand. Dude. Is that 1,000? Is that euros or rand? You gotta check. Yes. Rand. So, yes. Yeah. 200 rand. So is that 7,200? Am I correct? And another one there. Make sure you collect the details. Dude, we're gonna hold you accountable. You're recording it, guys, huh? 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 If he scams us. <laughs> Are you doubling as, in, as a person or as? Ah, hold on, hold on, it's important. Yes, OP? Yes. How long? They've been existing for a month. How long have you been registered? Six months. Okay, so they start up. Yeah. Well, double. How much does he have now? Six thousand. So double seven thousand. Whoa, 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 whoa! It's seven thousand four hundred right now. So it's times two now. That's what fourteen thousand eight hundred. I uh, there's a concept that we call fund matching. I think the guys from the Dutch and the guys from the development board know it. I'm sure you know it, but uh, okay, this fund matching is if the private, so it's the public private sector partnership model, right? If government puts in five million, uh, we're supposed to put in five million. And foreigners have put in, you put in 1,000, 1,000, I think 500. I need to have you to step up. You step up, you step up. Because <laughs> if we are going to found our own people, right? Crowdfunding states that 30% of the money that you should be from it has to come from your own people. So he's just left. No, 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 no. He's the institution. He's the institution, right? He's the only girl of money. How much is 
Yes, how much? How much is it? Uh, 14,000 from 27,000. The brilliant one. How, how much money is it? It's short? 13. 13, sir. 13,000 is short. You got it. And uh, can I say something? Just go to www.caesarcapital.org. So, Caesar Capital is a microfinance institution. We provide funding to uh, entrepreneurs that, for one reason or the other, they can't work with banks. So, is Caesar. S I Z A Capital for Money. That world you will match you, boy. And we're gonna watch you. But he must he must promise one thing, yeah. At least three jobs created. Yes, yes. No, can he swear? Swear. We like what you guys are doing. It's my first time here. I'm here by accident. Eh? I came to see some other guys and <laughs> I didn't even know what you're doing here. But we, we, we have a, a microfinance program where we support small businesses. We do seed capital, we do, you know, if, if the net bank says you shit off, we can't talk with you. Then <laughs> we're the guys you talk to. <laughs> and I love what you're doing. And I will be here every month, every month. And all those concepts we have, we'll find them, we'll take the risk with you. Whether it is startup or expansion, we we'll work with you. So, boy. We really appreciate that, guys. I think it's our best workout dinner yet. The sky's the limit. Really. Really. And we have happy. By the way, all the crowdfunding things we've done in the past couple of months, we've collected the full capital. So now we hope people are report. And we'll be able to produce a baby pod next month. Right? Yeah. Can take a seat. Yeah. I like you, bro. We are watching. <laughs> be scared. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Very much. When are you leaving? Baby. baby, you are cooking tomorrow. Where are you? Just disappeared now. Okay, I'll come to you. Guys, can we do calculator? This is pounds here. Cal calculator. Say that again. Uh, I want us to pull up some panel amount. That the say it again slowly. Nine thousand. Can kids say it? Nine thousand six hundred and thirty-six rand. So add that to the twenty-seven thousand. Oh. Yes. Hang on. Hey, where are you? Well, I think it'll be very good in terms of celebrating the good news. I'd love you to go and speak to these kids uh, in Alexandria and talk to them about the good news of what those kids in those primary schools are doing 
as, as, as part of that as well. Um, I suspect you would do that in any case, to be honest. But I really hope that you'll do that as well. We'll make sure he does it. This kid comes out of the third platform, so don't worry. These are our kids that will take care of them. Okay, we've got an investment. No? From taking a chance. Do you realize? He wasn't even on the program, guys. Do you realize? He was Oh, good, good. Okay. So, you know, I'm just confused. So, I, I, I often, I don't know, it will, you know, cost us explaining. So, usually, so if I went uh, first and then there's the, the bottom figure continues to increase, then I don't know when that throws me my double. Because my double offer is the last figure that he has to double it. So, I don't know whether that, hey, guy, I know. I know. <laughs> Surely, final figure? Ah, Surely. 36,500. Can I talk to us, OP? That includes my, my it initial double. double. So you need to reduce my initial double. So we're going to minus to 7,500. So minus, my don't worry, we've got a banker here. 29,000, right? So what do we get? Right, so we're doubling that. You okay. guys. I can't believe you're talking like that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Guy, I know. You know what? The soul that he bought me today. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I think it's. You know what? I've got a few. I think it's mas it's the Maseru magic. You know the guys from Maseru launched an investment bank yesterday. They launched an amazing thing. They launched their own bank, and they they blew us apart. Like. Cause that you remember yesterday. We wanted to leave yesterday. We're like, no, but we're not waiting to be here. Like, let's just get in the car and go back to Jordan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got a cap in here because it's after nine. People have got, uh, I want my car painted to go and check. So, for, for the corporates, because it's coming through our account, we charge that. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, that's my piece of you guys. He keeps us in business and it's amazing. Guys, we'd really, really like to thank you. And it's humbling. It's humbling purely because I said this in, in Maseru last night that had I held this idea to myself the first time I thought about it, we wouldn't have this. We wouldn't have it thriving the way it does. And it simply says if you are trying to own your idea, you're not going to go far. But if you push it out, if you contribute, if you, if you push it out into the community and, and try and impact as much people as possible, it, it always comes back to you, whether you like it or not. It's just the way that nature works. And you let it go, it comes back to you. Three, four, ten, four, whatever. And it's just about contributing to, to the collective. We are seeing that other people are contributing to us. We are contrib contributing to entrepreneurs. Everybody is winning within, this, within the circle. So let's spread that circle and let's try and make it real. And let's try and impact more and create more entrepreneurs in the process. Thank you. There's somebody who lost a, a Huawei phone. I used to call it Hugh Huawei. I got it. Huawei phone, somebody lost it. Oh, it's yours. All right, if you lost a Huawei phone, nice one, come to us. And thank you. Please tell a friend. Um, and we'd like to thank you and close it here. Have fun, network some more. But we are closing the venue at Megan. We're closing the venue at 11. What time is it now? It's 20 to 10. We're closing the venue in 40 minutes. So you've got 40 minutes to network more, and then we we'll shut it down. So thank you, guys. Do you have fun? If you're looking for food, there's still food at the back. Take care. God bless.